Hello, everybody. I am here with Lauren Oliver, the author of many books, her latest one, Replica, and I'm asking her a few questions about it. So could you tell us a little bit about Replica? Yeah. Sure. Um, thanks for having me, first of all. And um, Replica is cool because it's, well, I think it's cool because it's actually two books in one. So it's actually two independent stories narrated from two different characters. Um, one of them, Lyra, uh, is basically a human model. Um, she is a replica uh, who has been, um, made in an experimental facility design. She basically, she's manufactured human design for the purposes of pharmacological testing. Gemma, on the other hand, hundreds of miles away, seemingly no connection, is a normal girl who, um, is almost abducted early in the book, uh, because her father has had, uh, she finds out has helped finance a mysterious institute, the same one where Lyra is being housed. Um, so the fun thing about this story is that the two books can be read um, in, you know, straight through in either order or in alternating chapters and, um, together the two stories begin to entwine more and more. Um, so that's it. I mean, it's kind of a story about identity and what makes us human and also how we dehumanize others. Um, and it asks questions about whether or not we have the right to use people, um, other people, um, in order to potentially, you know, save or engender a better lifestyle for some. Um, but it's also, you know, fun and there's explosions and boys were cute and topless. So <laughs> hopefully something for everyone. Awesome. So I love that you made it a, 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 like a flip thing. You can pick either yeah. Lyra or Gemma. Um, I know there's no right way to read this, but like, what would you recommend? Was there any way just go yeah. into it, just pick one, or would you say like read Gemma first, then Lyra, or like, I know you could say you can even switch chapters. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You can switch chapters. The chapters are numbered so that they speak to each other. So you can read chapter one oh, and chapter awesome. one, chapter two and chapter two in either awesome. order. Um, I mean the best way to, <laughs> the best way to read it is Tell to buy me. one copy and then buy 80 copies for all your friends <laughs> and then no i just noticed there's pizza behind us by the way look at that oh, the, i'm sorry that's really distracting i'm distracting with the pizza well i mean the, no i that's obviously i'm being sarcastic but i'm although christmas is coming up and makes a great gift because then people have to give you two books in, uh, two gifts in response because two okay. books in one really it's really i mean part of the book is also about the difference of perspective how there's no one right story right so i hesitate to tell people, to direct people how to read it, because that's kind of the whole point. That's why I also sign both sides when I sign copies. But I do think the best way to read it is to find somebody else, at least one person who's reading it, to read it differently. Oh, and then to talk cool. about that's how that awesome. changes the experience. That's, that's, um, I might do yeah. that. That'd be a good so what inspired Replica? Has it been a long love affair with you with writing this book? Or is it been yeah. something you thought of randomly? I mean, you know, writing, I think most ideas come from a collision, kind of like dreams, of really long-lasting interests that slowly accumulate. And then a couple things that, you know, a couple things that happen kind of explosively and shake them loose. Do you know what I mean? So replica versions of replica certainly versions of Lyra's voice i was working on as far back as 2012 wow. um doing um a you know I, at that time i was actually working on a book about the fact that they did do human experimentation during world war ii that was one of the things that they did on the jews in captivity they did scientific horrific kinds of scientific testing on them um so i was kind of interested in writing about that but it was so so dark i couldn't find any way into it that then became a futuristic novel, which I couldn't really figure out. Anyway, eventually, years later, actually at Disney World, I somehow, I don't, maybe because when you're standing in a line of 2,000 people, everybody starts to look the same. Yeah. I kind of had the idea of doing it this way. And separately, I'd had an interest in looking at writing two separate stories that interact in some way. So, I mean, there were a lot of different things that went into it. Um, I do think that probably it is likely that thematically, the idea of what, what makes humanity and what responsibility we have to other people um, and people in captivity. I think it was probably also influenced on some level by like the great humanitarian crisis that um, we are living through. So, I mean, it comes from a lot of different things, different basically. Things. Yeah. Awesome. But all books do, really. That's true. That's true. Just afterwards, we authors just make up one story and like, because it's easier than trying to explain that we can't exactly trace where ideas came yeah. from. It yeah. all comes from like bits and pieces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So, can you tell us about the writing process for this particular book? Was it different from all the other books you have? Was it harder? Was it easier to write? Yeah, no, it was definitely not easier. It was definitely harder. Um, because, I mean, it's hard to even display, like, articulate, but because all of those ways of reading it had to function, it means that 
I had to constantly be thinking of each piece in inf of information and where it was in three different like dimensions, basically. So thinking about it as if this is, you haven't read anything else, thinking about it as if you've read the other person's story already, and then also thinking about it as though you've only read up but alternating chapters to that point and making sure that that piece of information thus functions this well in all three kind of different dimensions instead of in one. So that was really, really, really difficult. And the outline process itself took me about as long as the rest of the book. So um, this is the first book. So is this a series or a trilogy or This is duology? a duology. Oh, yeah, a duology. So we, right yeah, awesome. so we have, I think it's like, well, at least for me, it's great because I mean, It'll, I always knew I wanted it to be a duology in this book in particular because, again, there's I wanted to play with the symmetry of it that way because in the next book, there's still two, two you know, books in one right. and it's the same characters, but the characters kind of have switched places in interesting ways. So that was really important to me. Um, but, but I also think it's great because, like, it allows you to kind of do a series without actually having to sustain the agonizing like difficulty yeah. and interest you need for something longer than a duology. All right, awesome, <laughs> awesome. So, what can we expect from the sequel Helix without spoiling anything? Like, yeah. Is there three words you can say? or? Well, first of all, we may have to... I, we can certainly expect that Helix may not be the title because I cannot find oh, a title okay, for this book. Okay. So please, if anybody has Gosh, a suggestion, yeah. please email me. Yes. Um, what can we expect? It is... I really like it, actually. Um, <laughs> um, it's a lot more violent in some ways. It's darker in some ways. Um, and I think we, I can say without really spoiling it that they, again, they split switch places. So actually, ironically, Gemma ends up in a position where she is interred um, and she is like entrapped. Um, and Lyra is um, the person who's kind of on like a road trippy kind of thing um, in order to free her. Awesome. Um, Do you have a favorite book that you've written so far or the easiest one to write and the toughest one to write? So that's a lot of questions. Do you have a favorite one you've written or they're all, uh, just, they're all your, it's like trying to pick a favorite child. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I say that a lot, but it's also just because like they're all great. There are like children because they're great and also annoying in each of their own <laughs> just, like unique ways. Right. Um, I mean, Lisa and Poe is a middle grade book I wrote that means a lot to me because I wrote it from a, posi um, a p position of a place of grief because I just lost somebody who's very, very important to me. Um, so that in some ways is my, not my favorite, but I have a really, really deep emotional connection yeah. to it. Although ironically, it's also the only book that when I pick it up, I, it doesn't seem like I wrote it myself. Um, I don't have any kind of it seems like it came from somewhere else. And it was also the quickest book to write. It came kind of fully formed into my head. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, Replica is probably the hardest book that I've written. But, I mean, honestly, a lot of them I've struggled with. I mean, I'm working on a book now that's actually an adult book that, like, by the time I finish it, it will have been, you know, three years of concerted effort, complete re revise. And that's just an estimate. Maybe, like, by the time I turn it in, I'll have to do another revision. Yeah. And it's really difficult. It's fun, but it's difficult. So, you know, it's very, it's very hard to say. Right. So have you always wanted to be an author or like when did you realize you wanted to be an author? I've always written. I've written every day since I was about nine. Wow, um, awesome. Yeah, I, it's always been a part of my life. I mean, it's the same thing as reading for me. I get an immense pleasure from it. I didn't always want to be a writer because I didn't, it would be like, you don't want to be a toothbrusher. It's like you just, it's folded yeah. into your perception of the world. I did always want to write things and I did I always want to write books at some point. And then when I had a book that was written, I wanted to try to get it published, but it was really hard for me. I never really defined as like, you know, I just, it was part of an absorbed part of my life and my identity. I mean, I still feel like, I mean, I only really just started getting tattoos on my arms like last year because I finally was like, maybe I won't have to go back to a desk job anytime soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'd already published like 10 books, but it still feels like something that, you know, my connection is to the work and not the broader identity of right. being an author. Right. Books you've read this year. Um, I'm so glad you asked me that question because okay. I found like several new favorite authors this oh, year. Awesome. Not on the YA side, but kind of like one of the people, all of his books, even though some of them are YA and some of them are adult, they could really be published either one. Right. I cannot pronounce his name, but I know the titles of his books. He oh, wrote The Water Knife, Shipbreaker. Yeah. And the wind-up girl, his name is Paolo Bacca something, and it is he is phenomenal. He, I mean, I just can't even tell how much I love all of his books and their premises. So I highly recommend it. And again, 
all of his books could be either YA or adult. Right. Um, I recently discovered my great love for David Mitchell. I'm reading a book called The Shadow of the Wind right now, which I love. Um, and yeah, those are some of my those are some of my favorites from this year. Awesome. So, what authors do you have? Any authors that really inspire you? That really push you to want to be like a better writer and author? Yeah, I mean, all of those people. I mean, I mean, in general, yeah. my my it's funny because I don't really write books like this at all. But I mean first of all, I'm inspired by almost everybody who writes. I mean, right. I've learned something from every book I've ever written. But I do, I love big and very complex, rich worlds. Um, and I love things that are a little bit magic. So, like, magical realism is, is tends to be my favorite. That's why Salman Rushdie and Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Paolo, who does not do magical realism but his books are such a strange entwining of future and tactile details that it kind of feels that way um that's why some of they sometimes top my list so and david mitchell too i'm, I'm just i i love what he does his structural stuff is so brilliant so i love all that but really i mean honestly like i also love agatha christie like i yeah. love you know i still read middle grade books all the time so i'm really inspired yeah, by, by a lot of yeah that's yeah. awesome that's always good so um do you have anything we know you as a writer but do you have any other hobbies like the Besides, like, you know, I always joke that the reason that I don't, I write so much is that I don't have any other hobbies, but I do have one other hobby. Yes. I am a sick cook. So awesome. I love to cook and I love to entertain and I do vast, crazy, elaborate dinner parties. What's, what has been like your favorite recipe you've ever like made? Oh, I mean like, elaborate. first of all, I mean, like, I mean, I could read you my Thanksgiving menu, but I just got a smoker. I did a, my, Ooh. my, my fiance is from Denmark and I did this insane spread where I did like homemade gravlax tartare and I made like my own, um, Norwegian brown bread and I smoked it. I made smoked potatoes and made my own pancetta. I mean, like, I knocked it out of the park. Oh, I steamed mussels over um, uh, evergreen boughs to give them the pine needle scent. I mean, like, I get down. I get down. So I made my own butter. Come, so we can come yeah. over to your house. <laughs> anytime, right? anytime you want. Anytime you want. <laughs> awesome. No, I, I love, love it. cooking as well. Really? You sound like such an yeah. amazing cook. I love I'm it. It's like, the only thing. Those, and I also started doing that when I was nine. Nine was a big year for yeah, me. Yeah, right. But you know what? Like, nine was a big year, but then, like, apparently my interests haven't evolved since then. So I'm not sure what Those are two great interests. You can't complain about <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so true. that's all the questions I have.